Welcome to 12 Hong Paul. I'm Mike Montecalvo along with Shannon Heggie. Thank you very much for joining us today. You know, every day we've heard Governor Gina Raimondo talk about the COVID-19 pandemic that's really impacted not just the state of Rhode Island, but the entire world. We thought today would be a good opportunity to talk to some local mayors who are really in the thick of it. We heard new numbers today, the governor announcing that 269 new tests were positive. Unfortunately, seven more people did pass away. We send our sympathies over to their families. But a big takeaway, she had a three-phase approach to how she would reopen the economy. Phase one would be allowing people to get out of their house and start doing things. So we're going to talk to the local mayors. We're happy to have the uh, mayor of Providence, Jorge Alorza, Cranston Mayor Alan Fung, the mayor of Pawtucket, Donald Grevian, and Charles Lombardi, the mayor of North Providence, to join us today. Janet? And mayors, as Mike just said, thank you so much for joining us. We know this is a crazy time for a lot of people, and I can't even imagine what it's like to be the mayor of a city right now. That's not something when you run for election, I imagine, you ever think that you will be dealing with. We have weather events, we have tragedies, we have recessions. Uh, but being mayor in the midst of a pandemic, what is that like? And uh, Mayor Lorza, I'm going to ask you to answer that question first, please. Yeah, it's been a bit of a crazy time, you know, for emergency management. We have a plan if, say, an airliner crashes in the middle of downtown. We have a plan for that. We don't have a plan for something like this, or at least we didn't. And so it's been a lot of learning on the fly, trying to stay ahead of the issue, and just trying to be as responsive as possible. So we're tracking the data every single day, and we're encouraged that the numbers are flattening out. And I think that this new phase that we're entering, we're – at the end of the beginning, and just as we start to go back to some semblance of normalcy, you know we're going to uh, we're going to start loosening some of the restrictions. But as much as it, as it is loosening the restrictions, I think it's fine tuning the restrictions that we have put in place. We've been through this for a month and change now. We've learned. We have this experience, and it puts us in a position so that we know where to loosen and uh, you know how to be most effective. With the steps that we uh, that we take going forward, Mayor Lorza, thank you, uh, Mayor Fung. The same question to you, being mayor of the city of Cranston in the midst of a pandemic, it, is it something you can even be prepared for? No, it's it is definitely challenging times. You know, I've been mayor now for 12 years. When I first started out, we had those devastating floods where half the city was on the water. We've gone through blizzards. We've gone through now a pandemic. If the locusts come, I wave that uh, white flag. <laughs> You know, because it's challenging times right now for all of us. You know, Cranston, like Don, what he was dealing with with St. Ray's, Cranston had Cranston High School West. So both of our communities were one of the first ones into it with situations going on. It's been a long time coming, like Jorge was talking about, where a lot of people have been under those either quarantine orders or the stay-at-home orders. You know, for I feel for that Cranston High School West community because they were one of the first ones where they were on that two-week quarantine uh, before many of the people had that stay-at-home order. You know, businesses have been closed for a while now. A lot of us are looking forward and heard the news from the governor today about that possible May 8th order. We're looking forward to some relaxation of the stay-at-home, hopefully some of the social distancing guidelines, and getting back to work because our economy needs that boost in arms. Definitely challenging times, but we're all prepared, you know, to do what we need to do to protect our residents to do what's necessary to get through this pandemic and it's not just going to be a one-week process one month process it's going to take some time but all of us are ready and working together and there's also been a lot of positives that have come out of it absolutely <laughs> mayor Fung, thank you and uh mayor grevian same question to you if someone told you that you'd be mayor during a pandemic would you have believed them um no you know, I mean, we, we've been, uh, I've been in here for, in my 10th year, and we've seen a lot of things. You know, we talk about the stuff as Jorge and Alan, I'm sure Charlie will talk about in a minute. You know, we get ready for the snowstorms. We get ready for dealing with the floods, and even those are challenging. We have a plan for everything. We have an SOP for almost everything, but never a pandemic. Um, but, you know, we, we've had some challenging times here. It started here with the St. Ray's trip. Um, so we felt it first in the community. We were balancing through that. Uh, what's really helped me keep it real is my family at home. Uh, I have a 20 year old going to be 21 and an 18, a 17 going to be 18. And they've kept it real, you know, and you need to explain it. So I kept focusing in on trying to understand, hey, why can't I go out? Why do I need to stay home? And it was just like dealing with our residents. 
there's an impact to our economy, no doubt about it, but the residents and our health have to come first. And we're all looking forward to the days where some of the quarantines and the, the self-isolation self are lifted. But the concern is always, and I know each one of us has a high minority uh, population here, and we know that we need to be doing more testing in there. So you always get concerned about those numbers. So it's a balance. So I don't think anybody has ever been prepared. Anybody that tells you that, Shannon, I think they might be telling you a little fib. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Grevy, and thank you. And Mayor Lombardi, the same question to you. How challenging is it to be the, the mayor of the city of North Providence during a pandemic? Just pray to God every day that uh, we never, ever are faced with this again. I mean, all we try to do every day here is keep everyone calm, healthy and safe, and to continue uh, to encourage our uh, residents here to cooperate. You know, the social distance and everyone has a different idea. I mean, you go into one or you go by one business and you see people, you know, a number of people together. Then you go across the street and you see them standing outside six feet apart. Um, I think that's the question right now uh, that, that needs to be answered because I think people need to get out. And that's all you hear. They're in their homes. They're confined. They want to take a ride. They want to take a, a, a walk. They want to take a bike ride. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, when it comes to your family, they really come first. I mean, I have grandchildren. I haven't seen them. I don't know, maybe three or four weeks. Now we FaceTime. When did you ever think that you would, you know, um, talk to your grandchildren via FaceTime and not be able to give them a hug. Mm. And I think that's that's the issue right now. We need to get back. I agree with all my uh, uh, mayor friends here that we need to get back to normalcy. How we do that, I don't know. But as a small business person, I can also tell you this. This is not good. We need to get back to normalcy a little at the time whatever, but, you know, we're um, trying to follow the president's uh, guidelines, the governor's, uh, we're uh, conferencing, uh, calling uh, twice a day between the League of Cities and Towns, the governor's office. Uh, so um, hopefully we'll get through this, Shannon, and, uh, you know, get through, uh, get the curve leveled out. All right, thank you very much, Mayor Lombardi. Uh, Mayor Fung, the next question is uh, for you. We heard a, a, an unbelievable stat from the Department of Human Services. They think they did a survey of business owners. 16% uh, think they'll close within the next month. 26% uh, in the next one to two months. We also heard from restaurant owners that you know, 75% of them could close before this is all over. What are you doing in the city of Cranston? It's actually eerie driving through Garden City and seeing it absolutely empty. What are you doing for local businesses? Is it loans? What are you doing for that? Yeah, it's very sobering. And it's not just Cranston, it's businesses all across Rhode Island, all across our country that are facing those difficult decisions. You know, I came from a small business background with my parents in a Chinese restaurant. So I feel for a lot of those restaurant owners, we've tried to provide as much flexibility to them right now um, as to allow them to operate. Uh, when they're doing the takeouts, the curbside, trying to work with them, even on something as simple as traffic patterns so that people can get in and out as quickly as possible, uh, but doing it in a safe manner. And when things do open up a little bit, as the governor was mentioning earlier uh, today during her press conference, it is going to be a different world where we are going to be possibly sitting down with face coverings in restaurants. When retailers come in, we're gonna see probably a little bit more social distance guidelines. We're gonna to continue to work with them, but you know we're there with different resources that we already have and are trying to uh, utilize even more and leverage more from the federal government. You know, utilizing some of those SBA uh, dollars that are coming down uh, to you know provide help to them, whether in the form of loans or grants, provide them with the necessary information so that they can continue operations uh, or even making sure that the businesses that are you know thinking about opening or uh, have still open can have some flexibility and cut through any of the stupid red tape that sometimes bureaucracies at the local state and federal level you know put forward so we're going to do whatever we can to ensure that Garden City is going to be thriving uh, like it was before, that, you know, Chapel View to Marchetti's, Lumberto's, to every other restaurant is going to continue to operate uh, to the best that they can for years to come and remain open. 
Mayor Fung, thank you. And Mayor Grebbian, the next question is for you. You talked a lot about testing, especially a few weeks ago, and getting testing to all of the areas of your city, reaching out to different communities within your city. Do you feel like you've accomplished that? How important has that been for you? Um, it's been, you know, really a challenge uh, because of the resources, the limited resources and the expectations that folks have. Uh, we were able to work through Cano England and the Department of Health, and we were able to get testing done on site at Cano England. We're now focusing in on working with our partner in Central Falls, Mayor Deoser. Uh, we have the, the value of Dr. Fine, who used to be the department, uh, the director of Department of Health, working with us. Uh, we see the value in those walk-up testing sites. We have one at Cano England, but there are some hot areas and high population, high density and high uh, minority population that we want to make sure that uh, we're reaching out to. They, we're creating and we're working out how we reach out into those communities. There's a lot of Zoom meetings going on, education awareness. Uh, we're doing uh, outreach into the communities all through the schools and multiple languages. So we're doing what we can with the limited testing we have. Um, again, the challenge comes in is when we open up the economy is the balance. Have we gotten to everybody and what are those true numbers are? Our numbers are increasing and that's the fear of because most people weren't able to get a test or challenged to get a test. Availability in the Department of Health and the governor have been doing a great job. But there's that underlying concern of what do we do? Um, so if people are out there now, we're doing robocalls. We have a volunteer, one of our businesses, Colette has stepped up and they're doing phone banking out to the community for both communities. We're working with MedTech to see if we can do some home testing for those people that can't get out into the testing. So we're doing our part and the state is doing their part, but you know, concern always about, did we get far enough and deep enough? You know, Mayor Lombardi, one of the most heartbreaking things we've seen over the last several weeks is people in nursing homes and hospitals passing away and their families just not being there for them. Uh, the town of North Providence has had a couple of um, facilities that have been hit hard by COVID-19. Actually, Lawrence Gates, who's the owner of Hopkins uh, Manor, has filed for court protection, claiming he's suffering losses. Where do we go from here? Because it's not just the workers inside, but it's also the first responders that are going in and bringing the patients. How do you get your hands around this to protect people down the road? Well, that was one of the issues, uh, Mike. And, and by the way, I mean, as of yesterday, there were 394 positive cases. I mean, we're the fourth highest in the state, but we're number one per capita in positive cases. That's a little, uh, you know, scary. Uh, we've talked with the, the uh, people at the, the uh, three nursing facilities that we have here. As of yesterday, uh, when you combine the three of them, we're at about 150 cases in three facilities, Mike. That is um, very, very concerning on our part. We've talked with the owners and uh, you know offered any support. Um, how can I say guidance? We're trying to stay away from there. Uh, my main concern through all of this, and I had this issue with the health department, you know, going back about three weeks ago, the um, health department didn't tell us where, where these cases were. Now, I can understand that they didn't want us to know, okay, you have one at 22 Smith Street, uh, 1580 Mineral Spring, but when you have 50 positive cases in one facility, uh, my question is, why didn't you let us know so that we could give our first responders a one-up? So that when they're responding to that facility, I mean, just yesterday, we went to one facility three times. I did receive a call from the feller up at the Hopkins Health Center last week. We chatted. We're trying to stay in touch with them, Mike. Where do we go from here? Uh, you know, I'd like to say we need to, uh, uh, you know, pray that uh, we're going to get by this and so that these facilities will become uh, as safe as they were. And that's the interesting thing. You take like Golden Crest, Hopkins Health. I've been in there a number of times. Those facilities are immaculate. They've been faced with this. Our job right now is support is to support them and try to get them past this so we'll get them back to normalcy also. What's the answer? I, I, I don't have that answer right now, Mike, except to support them and ask all of the residents here, don't have a negative opinion. As a fellow that's been in there a number of times, they've been great partners with the town. We go in there, someone has a 100th birthday, 
we go in and celebrate. Uh, whenever they have a, a holiday function, we go in and support them. I've been in those facilities, and they're, they're, they're real, real nice facilities. And, you know, I said, as I stated, uh, you know, I, I don't know, Mike, hopefully we can get by this. Well, I know the governor has mentioned the other day she's going to have the National Guard come in, but that's a short-term plan. Hopefully there is a, a longer-term plan for those families. Janet? Thank you, Mike. And Mayor Lorza, our next question is for you. Uh, about 46%, I think, was the last number we got of the numbers, the positive cases we've seen, are within la the Latino community. So what are you doing in your city to try and reach out to the Latino community, to communicate with them? What are the biggest challenges uh, during this pandemic with all of that? Yeah, that, that's a great question. There, there are a lot of challenges that we have. I think that... Um, so we didn't have that data a couple of weeks ago, but we had a sense that it was going to be particularly bad in Providence. You know, with the density of residency that we have here, it just makes sense that that, that, that there would be more transmission. Uh, but then also when you, when you think of the uh, businesses that are still open, either factories, manufacturing plants, uh, restaurants, or CNAs that are still uh, uh, working at nursing homes and at other places, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those workforces are made uh, uh, are made up by significant numbers of Latinos, and then if they um, get the virus at work, you know many of our residents come back here to Providence, and folks live in triple deckers, sometimes three or four families in the same house. All of those conditions are ripe for transmission, and so that's just part of the reality that we that we have. And so a big big piece of this is communicating out there and continuing to reinforce that even if you're asymptomatic, you may still be carrying it and you still may be infecting others. So encouraging everyone to cover their face, to abide by social distancing restrictions, et cetera. Uh, but then also to make sure that testing is available. For anyone who's not feeling well, there has to be a place that's accessible to them. It has to be free, whether you have insurance or not. And it has to be available to everyone regardless of their immigration status. And so we've been communicating to, to folks that you shouldn't be concerned, you shouldn't be afraid. In fact, it's not just in your best interest, but it's in everyone's interest that you get that you get checked. So I go on, I go on the Latino radios, I uh, reach out to ambassadors throughout the community, and we just try to get the word out there of what tangible steps they can and should be taking, uh, while at the same time providing resources so that they can uh, they can get the help that they need. You know, I'll tell you one thing that I am I'm very concerned about with this. If you look at the trajectory of this uh, of this virus, um, it's uh, the the impact here in in the in the United States is very different than we've seen in other countries. Other countries, after they've reached their peak, they start to decline. But that's not what we're hearing seeing here in the United States, the region, Rhode Island, and or the city. We've reached our peak, which is great. But unfortunately, we've remained right at about our, our peak. We've flattened the curve, but we haven't reduced it yet. So uh, until we start seeing the numbers actually decline, we all have to be in high alert. And, you know, I'm concerned about, you know, folks feeling a false sense of security, that now that we've reached our peak and now that things are reopening, we don't want folks to get the impression that it's safe and you can go back to life as usual. We still have to be very careful and cautious. Uh, Mayo Lourdes, so just to follow up on that, the governor talked about in two weeks, if she sees continued numbers down, some of the things that she'd open up, uh, parks and beaches on a limited basis. You've closed everything. Even in two weeks, if she allows that opening up of the parks in Providence, because all four communities have great recreational areas, do you see the city of Providence still keeping them closed until you see more data? Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to follow the data, um, but... You know, the, the way that we see this happening is going to happen in a series of phases. And I think the first thing that we want to do is let people outside, stretch their legs, enjoy enjoy nature, and be outside. And, but we want to make sure that we are indeed past the surge and that we don't have a second wave that's soon, soon coming. And there are a number of things that we're doing. So my team, we're actively working on closing down or um, uh, opening streets up for pedestrian traffic and allowing it only for um, local car traffic, where if folks are traveling 10 miles an hour you know, to pull into their driveway, that's fine, but otherwise it's available only for pedestrians. So we wanna provide that space for folks, um, but, uh, but we wanna make sure that we do it very thoughtfully and carefully in a series of phases. I think that's the first thing that folks can expect to see, uh, but we're also thinking about 
you know, some of the manufacturing plants and factories that are still that are still open. What kind of guidance and support can we give to them so that as they continue open or they uh, then open open once again, you know, do they have the equipment to do temperature checks? Do they know exactly how to organize their work environment so that they can practice social distancing? I think most people want to do the right thing, but it's incumbent upon us to provide them the support so that they know exactly what they have to do and they have the resources to do it. Mayor Lorza, thank you. Um, Mayor Fung, I kind of want to play off of what Mayor Lorza was just saying about making sure people are listening and are following the guidelines and the rules. In the beginning, uh, the very beginning of this, you had to get creative and you were posting videos on Twitter because you were hearing about people not listening. And it's hard to look back now because we know so much more and we've seen so much more now. Uh, is that part of being mayor right now is trying to get creative and finding ways to just communicate uh, with the people in your city and getting them to understand the gravity of the situation? Absolutely. And you utilize whatever mechanism that you can. And I found that those short videos worked, especially when I was talking to a lot of the students at that Cranston West community. And I didn't want to be lecturing to them because that's not me first and foremost. But I wanted to kind of do it in a lighthearted way, do a video that, you know, makes them a part of that community conversation, how they can help, you know, be a solution to the problem. And it's also work because I've also taken those videos into each of the different departments that have been open. They're still working. Everyone thinks, oh, City Hall shut down. No, we're still operating. Operating. Different formats that we're operating, rotating schedules, employees working in different departments, doing different job functions. But all of us have staff that are doing their part to help deliver the message out there. And through these videos, we've been able to communicate and also alleviate a lot of the fears that have been out there with a lot of the residents, calm them, know that we're there, what we're doing in economic development, what we're doing for the senior center, still providing food for not just Cranston, but 13 other sites across the state, letting people know that you've got the census if you're still at home to fill out, to even helping support a lot of the community-based programs that are in need right now. My wife and I, my wife, as you know, is in healthcare, jumping to support you know, the blood center, jumping to support the food bank at CCAP, making sure that we get that message out and making our community a part of the solution and they've responded. That's one of the great things that happened. Those videos have been a fantastic way and I've seen all the other mayors do a lot of other things to kind of get the message out and bring us all together. And that's what I love about, you know, what's going on in all of our backyards. You know, Mayor Brennan, we talk about families that are struggling. The nonprofits are really struggling, too, whether it's the American Cancer Society or the arts and entertainment uh, industry. Uh, people are just not giving it as like they used to. You just look at the food bank. They've distributed 1.3 million pounds of food in just four weeks. Um, how the city of Pawtucket, you have so many nonprofits in your city, are going to step up and help them, not just the small business. Are there small business loans for that? What can the city of Pawtucket do? So a couple things. I mean, we can always do more. We're trying to figure out where we can get those dollars. But one of the things that really was working, we had some about $200,000 that we put out in the street, about, offered to and small interest loans to the small businesses, to some of the nonprofits. Um, we had Bristol County Savings step up and match. They'll put some dollars in about another 50000 So we're trying to get that money out there. We were able to get 14 applications out in like eight days because that's where the rubber hits the road. It's how do we get those money, the monies out there? We're in constant contact with our nonprofits. Um, everybody, and, and, and as the, my uh, colleagues have said, everybody's coming together. So it's, you know, in this tragedy or in, in this in this pandemic, people are coming together and they're actually getting more uh, creative. We're partnering. I talk more now to the nonprofits and to the small businesses probably than I have in years. And, you know, as much as we try to do those things and people are coming together, supporting one another, so we are getting as much money and support out there. Uh, we have our meals uh, that we have our site for our seniors. We have people are still working. We're delivering meals. We're still taking and we're respecting the social distancing rules, but our buses are still taking folks out from these areas who needed that we're relying on nonprofits for medicine or to the market. We're doing those things. So there's a lot that we're doing in all the communities, but there needs to be more. And I think as we roll out the next steps, you'll start to see more and more of that happening. But there is a good partnership throughout. We're reaching out, we're involving them in calling our communities, uh, calling our residents to in the community, I should say, and making them aware of all the guidelines and support that we have. 
we actually put out a question to our viewers on Facebook and we asked, do you have questions for mayors? And uh, we got dozens of responses, but overwhelmingly, I'd say 99% of the comments we got were, when am I going to get my stimulus check? So if we're hearing that question, I have to imagine all of you are hearing that question as well. Of course, it's coming from the federal government, so you only have so much control, but what are you doing? Because obviously people are struggling and they're looking for that money. Um, and I want to hear from all of you on this, but uh, Mayor Lombardi, why don't we start with you? Yes, we're getting the same calls, uh, Shannon, and, you know, we reach out to the state. We reach out to the Small Business Association, and most of the time it's tell them to stand pat. The check's coming. And some people are getting a little tired of that answer. So the only thing we can do, okay, I wish I could write them a check. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. We have to depend on what we're being told. And I will be honest with you. If I were one of those people that were waiting for a check, I would be, I don't know, I'd probably be upside down. I uh, grieve for them, and I feel feel bad for them. But, again, when you talk to small business, it's coming. Um, I don't know. Mayor Lombardi, any specific resources that you want to get out there for people who do watch this? Because I know this is all about communication and just making sure people in your community know where they can get help while they're waiting for that check, where they can get food, where they, they can get answers. Is there anything you want to uh, point out specifically for them, for those that are watching? Just that um, any anyone, and this phone rings all day long here, that uh, any advice or any help that we can uh, render to any of our um, residents, uh, business people in town, we're standing by just, uh, we've been out and I've been visiting with them. Again, coming from small business, I could relate to that. Yeah, It's not easy for most of these businesses. And that's the reason why we keep saying we need to open as quick as possible uh, and as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Lorza, same question, please. <laughs> Everyone's wondering where their where their checks are. I know that the IRS has a website. Um, I actually tried it for myself, and it, it doesn't seem to, well, at least it didn't work to give me the information that I was looking for. But I encourage people to to keep trying. That's the that's the only place to get the to get that information is directly from the IRS. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, it's um, we're we're getting towards the the end of the beginning. Okay, so uh, first was the spread, and now that we have it under control, we're all trying to figure out what this new world that we live in looks like, what shape it's going to take, um, and and no one really knows. So it, part of this is you know experimenting. Part of it will be fits and starts. We are going to loosen and fine tune some of the restrictions, uh, but uh, you know this is a whole learning process for everyone. And just as it's been throughout this entire time, for this to be successful, uh, we need everyone's help and cooperation. Uh, we've been very fortunate, I think, as an entire state, that uh, people have really rallied around uh, uh, each other and have abided by most of the most of the restrictions. And so, as we go forward, we are going to continue to ask our folks to um, to be responsible, to sacrifice when necessary. And to do it because it's um, in, in our entire community's uh, best interest. So, you know, I'll, I'll just leave with this point. Um, you know, I remember Mr. Rogers saying once that when he was a child, he would sit on his mother's lap and uh, um, they would see terrible things happening on TV. And his mother would always tell him, you know, when disaster strikes and the sky seems to be falling, always look for the helpers because there are always helpers in those occasions. And that's what we've seen step up throughout our cities and throughout the entire state. People are stepping up to help in very selfless ways. So I want to thank all of the residents of, uh, of our communities for doing that. And I know that we can continue to count on them as this enters our new phase. Thank you, Mayor Lorza. Mayor Grubby, in the same question, I mean, you must be getting a ton of those calls, like we're seeing, you know, where is my stimulus check? Where is my money? I don't know how much longer I can make this stretch. It, it must feel, you must feel powerless when it comes to that. Absolutely, and I think all of us recognize that we are powerless, but there are things that we can do in our community. So for those folks who need food, um, you know, and some supplies, we're here working through those. We're working through a city hall they can call. We're working through our senior center. We're working through our EMAs as well. And uh, we've had some great partners in the community. The um, Ocean State Job Lot stepped up, and we've been doing food drops at the McCoy Stadium uh, with the Paw Sox. So we've been able to do those things 
with partners. So we're able to get some food and some of those things out there. But the council and I uh, have taken the approach not to do any tax increases. I'm sure our other mayors were going through our budget process of doing those things when none of us are going to throw anybody out of their home because they can't afford to pay that, right? We're working on how we can uh, support the governor's initiatives and the rent money that's going in, um, or as far as the taxes go, how do we work with each everybody individually? If somebody can pay, naturally there's a cash flow issue, so we'd want them to pay if they can. But those that can't, we're working directly with them through the departments because people are working to keep that keep them in their homes. Nobody's going to throw them out. So how do you make those dollars stretch until the day comes. We hear constantly that the money's coming. We have money coming to us through the state, to the federal, to the state, to us. And we're waiting on that as well. But anything that we can do, you know, we're being creative. Businesses are stepping up that have some cash flow. Uh, they're trying to support some of the residents. So we're working well as a community through the different organizations. Thank you. And Mayor Fung, uh, from you as well, How? what are you doing for your uh, residents to just try and help them through before that money comes. You know, advocating for them, you know, you've heard from all of us today. The bottom line is we're get all of our phones are off the hook with these questions about, you know, what's going on, not only just in Cranston, in our backyards, but also with the state, with the federal government, and especially with those uh, tax dollars coming in, um, you know, that so-called stimulus funds, when's it going to hit into their bank accounts? Uh, on behalf of all those residents, on behalf of all the mayors, town administrators, managers, on behalf of our state you know i've got one message to washington dc i'm going to channel my best cuba good in june and say show us the money because that's the bottom line this shouldn't be about partisan politics and where a lot of the frustration really comes into play with all of us is that last round of stimulus and you know i know all of us are on those national calls as well there was dollars that was set aside for state and local governments in particular because local is where we can put the biggest need to you know we're on the phone with our federal delegation we're on the phone with the governor's office we're on the phone every single day with all of our partners with that one message we need those dollars because without those dollars, it's going to impact and decimate a lot of what we can do to protect our residents. And this shouldn't be about Republicans, Democrats, whatever party labels. It should be about Washington, D.C. getting past that. Stop with the dysfunction of back and forth, you know, the bickering that sometimes goes on that we see in the news and get things done for all of us. Uh, you know, they're going to have another, we're hearing about another round of stimulus coming, a fourth round that is supposed to include dollars for us at the local level. Let us have that opportunity to put it into our revenue streams and put it back into our residents. Because Don's right, a lot of us aren't going to be raising taxes because we know people are hurting the high unemployment. We know that a lot of people have had people that have been impacted with positive COVIDs or God forbid, you know, those that had someone pass. We need to be caring, concerning for all of them. And that's what we're gonna continue to do. Be advocates, strong advocates at all levels on their side. And for those people watching right now and they have any questions, whether it's about the uh, stimulus money or any financial dealings with uh, what they're going through. We have 12 response where Target 12 has been answering all kinds of questions. We're over 8,000 questions right now that we're getting answers to. So if you're watching, you go to the 12 response tab, click on there. And if you have a question, we'll get out and uh, talk to the people who can uh, actually answer those questions for you. We appreciate you taking out the time, mayors, to uh, be part of the 12th town hall. I think a lot of people are wondering, when can we get back out? When can the kids go back to school? When will we <laughs> be back to normal? We all live in hope. And we hope that that would happen. So Mayor Lorza, Fung, Grebian, and Lombardi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And thank you, Mike Shannon. Thank you.